Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me. Now in this short lesson, I want to talk to you about the least loved, most forgotten about and neglected anchor for 23 point anchor. Now we all hear about how wonderful the golden anchor is, but it is simply time for the 23 points to raise its head and get into the spotlight. So I'm gonna show you in this video when to make a 23 point anchor and most importantly why to make it now there are four general ideas on why we should make a 23 point anchor firstly it protects it protects against an impending blitz attack secondly it can create awkward roles for your opponent thirdly it can reduce your gammon losses sometimes significantly and fourthly, it limits your opponent's cube action. So I'm gonna demonstrate these four ideas by showing you some positions and hopefully by the end of this video, in around 10 minutes, you will have a better understanding on when to make a 23 point anchor over the board. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoy my free backgammon content, new lessons every Wednesday. Now in this first position, white has a 3-1 to play. How do you go about making this play? Now here, did you fall into the trap? It's super tempting to make the five point, of course. It's often right to make the five point and you need a pretty good reason not to make the five point. But here you have a very good reason not to make the five point. And that is simply your opponent's checker arrangement, particularly his front position. Now green has 15 checkers as we do as white, but 12 of green's 15 checkers are in the front position, ready to attack. Now, if we do not make the 23 point anchor here as white, we are simply going to get destroyed. Green has so many checkers to hit us, to make points on our head, to basically blitz us off the board. Green has 12 checkers in the zone, in attacking position, and that is simply too threatening to stand back and do nothing. Now, by making the 23 point here, then we simply slot with the other three. And the benefit there of making the anchor is we completely negate our opponent's blitz value. And his spare checkers then cannot be used to attack us at all. They can simply only be used to make points in his board. Of course, Green would prefer to attack us, knock us off the board, make more points and increase his gammon wins. Here, we simply must make the anchor to negate our opponent's blitz value. And if we look at the panel on the left-hand side, we can see that the top, the top four players all include making the 23-point anchor, and the five-point would be a double blunder. So this is a first reason. Make the 23-point to counter the blitz attack. Look at all four quadrants of the board before making any play over the board and that will guide you towards seeing the strength of your opponent's front structure and the need to make that anchor. And there we can see by making the five point instead, then we are giving our opponent 24% gammon wins after a 23 point anchor is made, the correct play, we are only giving our opponent 9% gammon wins, which is a huge reduction of almost 15% in gammons. Now in the second position, white has a 6-1 to play. Now here, it's very tempting to play 23 to 16. We escape a back checker, we make a point in the outfield, we jump our opponent's broken prime, but it would be an error to make that play. And it's simply better to make the 23 point anchor and play 16 to 10. But why is this? Well, to understand this position further, we can look at this feature 
on XG called dice distribution. Now I did make a previous video on this. You can go out and check that yourself. But basically what it does is it compares good and bad rolls. So here we can look at these two bar charts on the right hand side and they show how greens rolls play after we as white have made the best play and the second best play. So on the top bar chart, we can see that after we as white have made a 23 point anchor and 16 to 10, our opponent has quite a lot of rolls showing in red and some rolls showing in green. Now, if we compare that to a bottom bar chart after we as white have made the wrong play, 23 to 16, we can see our opponent then has more green rolls and fewer red rolls. So what does this tell us? Well, by simply looking at the colors, we can see that after we make the best play of making the anchor, our opponent has more bad rolls on the top than good rolls. Whereas on the bottom, after making the second best play, our opponent has more good rolls than bad rolls. So by making a 23 point anchor, we are giving our opponent fewer good rolls and more bad rolls. And that's exactly what we want to do. We want to make our opponent's rolls play badly. We want to give him more awkward decisions over the board. And that is simply represented in green and red on these two bar charts. So on the top, there's fewer green bars and more red bars, which simply means after a 23 point anchor, our opponent has more bad rolls and less good rolls and that's how we like it. So this is a second reason on why to make the 23 point anchor create more awkward rolls for your opponent. Now in this third position this one is quite tricky white has a double one to play. Notice that he is trapped behind a six prime. Now the first thing that's worth mentioning is that before White rolled this double one, he only had just under 20% game winning chances. But after this double one, if played correctly, White has more than doubled his winning chances to 43.4%. So this is a pretty good roll, you could say, in doubling your winning chances. But how do you play it? Well, the first two might seem obvious. We step up to make the 23 point anchor, but then what about the remaining two? So here there is only one correct move and anything else is an error or a blunder as seen on the left. Now, well done if you got this right. Now, to find the correct play, we need to take some time and think strategically on what we want to happen. And what we want to happen here is for our opponent to break his prime and allow us to escape. So positions like this are incredibly tactical and you need to spend time to see how your opponent's roles play. Now, after we make the correct play of stepping up to the 23 point, we then play 13 to 11 with the other two. And by doing this, we have the blocking point six away from our open five point, which is usually a very good idea. But more importantly, we give our opponent a really terrible six five to play. Now, just look how that would play if green happened to roll a six five. He would then be forced to break his prime on the other side of the board and give us numbers to escape and turn the game in our favor. So even though our winning chances have increased as white, we're still not the favorite because we are behind the prime. So we need green to crunch and break that prime. And therefore we have to look at how rolls play. Now also by making 13 to 11, by making 11 points with the other two aces, we are only leaving green a double five, but double five is good anyway for our opponent. So we don't really mind being hit on our 10 point. 
any other play which is showing as an error, we just give green more rolls to hit us back. And, you know, other rolls don't play as awkwardly. So here, again, it's a really good position that does come up a lot that you need to think strategically about by advancing to the 23 point and making the 11 point, then we simply are creating awkward rolls for our opponent and trying to turn the game in our favor. And of course, by coming to the 23 point, we are also reducing our gammons, which we will see in the next couple of slides. Now, this is a third reason on why to make the 23 point anchor and that is to reduce our gammon losses and here we can see in this position by having a 23 point anchor we only lose six percent gammons if instead we had the 24 point anchor made we would lose 12 percent gammons so double the amount of gammon losses because if we had the 24 point anchor we'd be more penned in and it would be harder to escape and green would have more checkers taken off by the time we did escape so this is quite interesting six percent gammons with the 23 point 12 percent gammons with the 24 point and the final reason for the 23 point anchor is to make our opponent's Q play less efficient and effective. So here we can look at this comparison and we can see that on the left hand side when we have a 24 point made as white, then green in the position has a big double and we have a small take because we are losing 22% gammons. However, on the right hand side when we as white have a 23 point made, then green has a borderline double, no double, and it's a huge take because there we are losing 15% gammons. So here we can see the difference between our opponent having a strong cube on the left when the 24 pointer is made to not really having a cube at all when the 23 point is made and the difference in 22% gammons and 15% gammons. Now this is not insignificant because you could be playing a match, your opponent could be two away and you really do not want to lose a gammon and lose the match. Also he could be four away and the cube could be turned and you would rather not lose a match and lose all four points in a single game. You'd rather lose two points and then continue to play in the match and play more games to try to turn the match in your favour. So there we have it. Those are the main reasons for making a 23 point anchor, defending against a blitz structure, creating awkward rolls for your opponent, reducing your gammon losses and making his Q play less efficient. So I hope you learned something. I hope that was enjoyable. Thank you very much for watching. See you next Wednesday. Bye bye.